Okay, so welcome here to Unity. I'm using Unity 3, uh, the pro version, so we can see that, okay, when we open up Unity 3, uh, one of the first things that happens is that it loads up this uh, sample game, this third-person view uh, shooter action type of game that comes with Unity 3. It's called the Boot Camp Demo, and it's a really helpful demo to see how to make a pretty complex game, and you can dissect it, check it out, see how the Unity devs created it, so you can learn something yourself. Uh, we also get this Welcome to Unity window, which uh, basically gives us some pretty helpful links in different parts of the Unity uh, website where you can learn some basics. So before I get started with this, uh, just a quick little um, note here. If you're new to Unity or you have no production or very little production experience with Unity, uh, please stick with this video and watch this video in its entirety so you can learn some of the basics and uh, kind of foundation principles of Unity before we go on any further to more advanced stuff because this tutorial will get pretty advanced pretty fast. If you already have production experience with Unity making games and or any type of interactive content and you are you consider yourself a veteran of Unity, you might want to skip this video since it's going to be just uh, repetitive for you if you're if you're advanced. Okay, so and we can see here in our viewport this is the bootcamp demo that comes with Unity. I did not create this. This comes with Unity as a game sample for you to check out and uh, and learn from okay so let's talk about the unity uh, UI the user interface in unity and how to use it is very important because if not you can't uh, continue going into more advanced topics in unity so let's go ahead and, and take care of this and go over some of this basic fundamental stuff okay so unity just like any other piece of software has a main menu item up here that you can access different tools and features from and we'll be going over these in depth as we work with Unity. You'll see how to go into these menus and which ones to go into to create things or to edit things and stuff like that. Then up here, we have these uh, four buttons that are grouped up over here. The hand icon basically is for viewport navigation. So if I left click and drag with the mouse, I can pan the camera around. If I right click and drag, I can sort of turn my virtual head or viewpoint around almost like if I was standing in the game world and was just rotating my head and looking around zooming in and out is pretty easy you can use the middle mouse uh, scroll wheel to zoom in and out okay then we have these three buttons over here these are ma manipulation icons basically the first one with the arrows lets you move objects around the second one has these kind of curved arrows around each other lets you rotate objects and then the third and last one lets you scale objects so if I use the move tool for example, let me just turn my viewpoint around over here. Here's a kind of this generic soldier character, kind of the main character of this uh, boot camp demo game that comes with Unity. Okay. By selecting the entire character here, you'll notice that with the move tool active, I get myself this manipulator with all these arrows. I have these different colored arrows and each one pertains to a different axis or direction in the world. So for example, the green one is the Y axis. This moves up and down. The blue one's the z-axis, which moves forwards and backwards, and the red is the x-axis, which you probably guessed it moves left and right. Okay, so pretty simple. And if I switch over to the rotate tool, I get myself a rotate gizmo, which allows me to rotate my character around wherever I want in whatever axis that I want. And then finally, we have the scale tool, which gives us a scale manipulator. And if you've ever worked in any 3D programs like Maya, or 3ds Max, Softimage, or uh, blender anything like that then you're probably familiar with how these things work now the the center button what this does it moves the pivot point the currently active working pivot point around okay so each object has a pivot point which is the location of where this little gizmo is gonna pop up right now it's set the center what that means is that this little move gizmo uh, is gonna be located at the center of whatever object I have selected okay if I click on that, it's going to switch to pivot mode. What this does, it moves the gizmo to the actual pivot mode of the object when it was imported into Unity. Okay, And if I turn around and look with the camera, you can see the pivot point is way over there in that kind of little valley all the way in the distance. The reason it's located over there was because when this character was created in whatever 3D program it was created, uh, whether it was Maya or 3ds Max or whatever program it was, the uh, the author that created this uh, asset here place the pivot point way over there okay so if you can't find the pivot point for whatever reason you can hit center and have the pivot point reset over here to the center of the object which can be pretty helpful 
global and local this just switches your uh, your transform or your coordinate space from global mode which is right now to local mode all right pretty simple over here we have these uh, play buttons over here that allow us to play the game inside the unity editor and we'll talk about that in a few in a moment here now over here we can see we have two tabs the scene uh, view tab and the game view tab let's talk about the scene first the scene view tab is kind of like um, the ability for you to edit your world so this is the viewpoint that you're going to be using to edit and manipulate your game world set up your levels place objects move them around do different things like that okay the game view allows you to test the game out inside the unity editor this is fantastic for whenever you make changes and things inside the game and you want to test them out you can load up the game simply by switching over to the game view and hitting the play button over here and we'll see a demo of that in a moment back to the scene view over here we have different view, uh, ways that we can view the scene here of our game so for example if I click on the textured button I can switch different options right now I'm viewing everything in textured mode let's switch over to wireframe mode and now we can see everything's in the wireframe mode which can help you out sometimes you can look at uh, a textured and wireframe combination so we can see wireframe on top of the textured view we can also check render paths and we'll be talking about render paths later on in this training tutorial um, where we'll talk about deferred rendering uh, forward rendering paths things like that basically we get different color codes here to tell us uh, which rendering path each object is taking and then we have light map resolution this allows us to do a little bit of uh, uh, testing with our light map resolution on our scene okay and we'll talk about light mapping the beast light map later on in this tutorial we're not going to get into that now but we'll see later how we can view our light map resolution to be able to do some uh, some testing and things and be able to tweak our light mapping in our scene so over here we have the RGB mode which is currently active it allows us to see everything in color if we switch to alpha we can see the alpha values of everything in our scene which can be pretty helpful we'll see later why we can also see an overdraw version of our scene which basically shows us what's being drawn okay so we can see areas that are more dense where there's more objects being drawn uh, on top of each other then we can see the mitmap mode which allows us to see the uh, the relation between the size, the texture size and resolution of textures in our scene uh, in relation to the uh, the camera or the viewpoint of the viewer and how close or far they are from those textures. Then over here we have this light icon which allows us to turn uh, the real-time in-game lighting off so now we see everything kind of this neutral light. If we turn the game lighting back on we can see the actual game lighting uh, in our level so we can see all the shadows the pretty lighting all that stuff then we have the uh, effects button over there which if we turn it off we turn off uh, all these effects such as the sky box in the background you can see the sky is now gray we can't see anything uh, we also turn off the environment box if I turn that back on you can see the bluish environment fog on top of objects that are really far away like those mountains far away and also the uh, sky box comes back we have an audio button when it's on you'll be able to hear audio items that are inside your level okay so if you've placed audio inside your level you'll be able to hear it uh, by turning on the audio button turn it back off and you don't hear anything anymore so let's test out how we can test something in our in our game so we can uh, in the game view like I said before is where you're gonna be able to test out different things so if I hit the play button the really cool thing is that unity is gonna load up the game inside the editor and now I can play test the game so I can walk around with my character I can jump I can do whatever I you know whatever the game was designed to do I can play test it inside so if I was you know testing out a script or uh, playing around with some of the parameters on this character and I notice that something's wrong and I can play test it note that it's wrong stop the play test and go in there and fix it in the inspector okay so pretty useful pretty cool stuff over here on the right we have the inspector. The inspector, the way it works is if we select an object, whatever object is selected, the inspector will show us basically uh, a breakdown here of all the different parameters that belong to that object. So we'll see all these different components and these different components have different parameters and things. So components can be all kinds of things. Down here we have a hierarchy view. The hierarchy view shows us this list. See this in a hierarchy type of format. And basically everything that's in this list exists inside of our game world in this specific level that I'm looking at right now. The project view is a little bit different. It shows us a hierarchy type 
uh, view here, but it's based on the project. So right now, there's a project called Bootcamp Demo on this computer that I'm working on, on the hard drive, and it contains all these different folders with subfolders and different paths with different assets like the character, the textures that are being used in the scene, different meshes that are being used in the scene, animations and things. All that stuff is saved right here in the bootcamp demo project directory that's located on the hard drive. And we'll talk about uh, projects a little bit deeper uh, further down in another video, okay? So that's basically it. If you want to customize the, uh, the UI of Unity, you can do that. If you come up here to this layout button up here in the top right, you get yourself about four different presets you can choose. So I could choose to go with a two by three view, which will do this. I can switch over to a four split view, which will do this, which can be pretty helpful if you wanna if you wanna work this way. I like to work with the tall uh, view here. Uh, it's just um, kind of my preference. I like to work this way. Okay, you can also customize the UI however you want. So if I click and drag on the hierarchy tab up here, for example, I can rip out that window and make it a free floating window, which I can then resize however I want. I can right click on the hierarchy tab and I can add a new tab. So if I want, say, an animation window in here, I can have it. And then I can click and drag this window wherever I want. So if I'm working with dual screens, which uh, in a professional setting, you should be working with at least two screens. Uh, you can click and drag this view over here and move it to your other screen, move it back, things like that. Close it, get it out of here. Maybe you don't like working with that view at all, so you can close it and get rid of it. And then you can just keep working in your scene. And then when you're happy with the layout that you create, you can also save that layout so you can create your custom layouts and things like that. Or you can revert back to factory settings. I'm going to go ahead and click on tall. I like working with the tall preset. This is what I'll be using to work with throughout most of the uh, of the tutorial okay we'll be going over basics as we work in this tutorial so there's a lot more to learn and you'll be picking up on it pretty quickly and easily as we work on our project this is not going to be a project this is the bootcamp demo that comes with unity we're actually going to be working on a separate project from scratch that I've set up specifically for this tutorial okay so I'm gonna end this video here and in the next one we're gonna start to get into a little bit deeper and more intricate with projects and the whole project workflow with unity